Often it's necessary to review the current or safe test results as well as to evaluate the depth of detected crack. In this video you will learn how to create a calibration curve using the calibration menu and how to review test results using the view menu. To plot the calibration curve, it is required to set up all parameters of the flood detector for operation with the specific probe. You can learn how to set up the parameters for the testing from the previous video. Being in the test menu, it is necessary to move the ECP on the flaw free section before minimal defects of the reference standard with the defects of known depth and launch the balancing using the F1 key. Then you have to cross all defects with an appropriate scan speed so to get all signals from the defects of regular shape, that is max symmetric signal relative to its peak on strip charts. After defectogram acquisition, press the calibration key to quickly navigate to the calibration menu. Now set a curve for evaluation of the defect depth, amplitude or phase. In our case it's amplitude. Select the units of defect measurement. Select a reference standard you are working with. If your standard is not in the list, then it will be necessary to set the defect depth manually, which will be demonstrated later. Position moves the measurement cursor in the strip chart. Width sets the width of the measuring cursor. There are four types of measurements. Peak peak. The measurements are made between two points situated at the max distance from each other in cursor width. Center peak. The measurements are made between the cursor center and the points situated at the max distance from the center in cursor width. The next one. The measurements are made between the center and the cross point of cursor center signal. Vertical maximum. The measurements are made between two points situated at the max distance from each other in the cursor width in vertical projection. Before plotting the calibration curve, it is necessary to move to the curve points item and to delete all points of the previous calibration curve, pressing freeze button. Move to the position item and position the central line of the cursor on the peak of the signal from the minimal defect. Using the width item, increase the cursor width to get only one friendly signal there, that is, the signal from the defect. Having placed the cursor on a defect, press the Save Default key in order to add the calibration curve point. With the help of arrows, move to the calibration points and set the depth of the first defect of the calibration curve by Decrease, Increase and Step keys. Then I perform similar operations for all other defects. Each newly added point of the calibration curve is assigned with a number 1, 2, 3 and so on. The max number of the calibration curve points is 16. To make sure that the curve is plotted correctly, it is necessary to perform a checkup on the same standard as follows. In the test menu place the ECP on the flaw free section of the reference standard before any flaw and press F1 key for balancing the ECP. Pass this defect with an appropriate scan speed. After that, go to the view menu, pressing the view key. When entering this menu an operator is offered to view and analyze both current and saved test results. Parameters, position, width and cursor type are the same as in calibration menu. Position measurer 
is intended for displaying the signal meter in the complex plane. Position scan is for changing the number of points in a strip chart. Also, there is a possibility to change scale, position of complex plane center, display of grid and axis. Now we have to point the measuring cursor at the signal from the defect and evaluate the coincidence of the indication in the lower field with the actual depth value. The flood detector has a feature that allows to quickly measure the signal-noise ratio. First, set the measuring cursor on defect-free area in the strip charts and press F1 key. Then, move the center of measuring cursor to the signal peak from a defect. The result appears in the right bottom corner as the measured signal-noise ratio.